Hello everyone. I am Shigeo Yoshida at the University of Tokyo in Japan. I am glad to present Pocopo, a pin based shape display that has the capability of holding itself for enhancing haptic experiences in virtual reality. This work was done with Yu Chan Sun and Professor Hideaki Kuzuoka. In this presentation, we introduce Pocopo, the first handheld pin based shape display that can render various 2.5D shapes in hand in real time. First, let me introduce our motivation. In most VR applications, it is quite common for users to touch virtual objects, hold them in their hands, and carry them around. However, it is difficult for users to believe that they are actually holding an object with the corresponding shape that they see in the virtual environment. The production of shape sensation in VR is still under development. To make the VR experience more realistic, researchers have developed several methods to provide haptic feedback to the hand. However, most of these methods focus simply on providing false feedback to the hands, since skin contact plays an important role in rendering shape sensations. Those methods cannot fully really provide the sensation of holding objects with various shapes. To challenge this issue, we come up with Pocopo, that can render shape sensation in hand based on a pin-based shape display. Pocopo has 36 pins, and each pin can be controlled independently, similar to other pin-based shape displays. Pin-based shape displays are a class of haptic devices that can render the surfaces and shapes of objects using a set of thin pins. As you can see here, many types of pin-based shape displays have been proposed. Although those displays have a large display area and high resolution, they tend to be heavy and inevitably table anchored. Moreover, since the actuators of existing pin-based shape displays are often placed underneath the pins, they tend to be too big to grasp. Some researchers have already proposed mobile shape displays. Haptic Edge Display is a handheld shape display that can be attached to smartphones. As Haptic Edge Display employs a single line pin array, the device can present only 1.5D shapes. Furthermore, Output force of each pin is relatively weak, so the device cannot maintain its shape while the user grabs it due to its back-drivable feature. In contrast, Pocopo employs a non-back-drivable mechanism to maintain its rendered shape while being held by a user. Moreover, Pocopo has multiple pin arrays, and this contributes Pocopo to render 2.5D shapes. Pupop is another mobile shape display. Pupop renders shapes by inflating the small airbags holding in hand, so it can render only predefined shapes. To render different shapes, Pupop has to replace an airbag or attach multiple airbags. On the other hand, Pocopo can change its shape instantly without changing its form factor. Another limitation of Pupop is that it cannot simulate the continuous transformation of the shape of an object. However, our proposed device enables the dynamic transformation of the shape of the proxy while being held by a user, enabling the users to feel like they are holding a living creature. Next, we will explain the implementation of Pocopo. Our challenge was how to make a pin-based shape display into a handheld size. There are some kinds of actuators to move along a longitudinal direction. A little screw in the actuator might have enough power to push the user's hand while grasping it, but the mechanism tends to get larger along the motor direction. A pneumatic actuator might be small, but requires an external air pump, thus has less mobility. Recently, a little base linear actuator has been used for small shape-changing robots, but insufficient power to maintain shape while the user grabs the device. In Pocopo, 
We use Romgear mechanism and read screen for achieving its handheld size and non-pack drivable feature. This is how Rome gear of Pocopo works. The lead screw rotates with the Rome hoil simultaneously. The spacer with photo micro sensor is inserted under the Rome hoil, so that it can read the rotation of the Rome gear. Pocopo has a modular design that facilitates the easy expansion of the rendering region, depending on the purpose. Four structures are put together with one layer. And we assemble three layers, that is, 12 structures for one Pocopo. This is what it looks like when it's actually assembled. The pins protrude from two sides of the device. One side touches the user's palm base, while the other side touches the user's fingers. Each side has three arrays of six pins, thus the device has 36 pins in total. The display area where the pins touch the user palm base and finger is 58mm times 30mm on each side. The lengths of the pins were varied according to their positions to prevent interference of the mechanisms. Each pin can extend up to 3, 9, and 14mm in the order from the outermost pin. To track the rotation of the lead screw, we embedded a self-made optical encoder with hot micro sensor as a spacer at the base of the lead screw. We manually drew a reflective pattern on the base with white and black markers. Then the optical encoder could read the changes in the color by assembling these elements all together. Pins can move like this. One of the obstacles in downsizing is electrical wiring. Each pin on Pocopo requires three wires for the photo micro sensor and two wires for the motor. As Pocopo has 36 pins and requires 180 wires in total, if you simply wire it up, this is what happens. This was the first working prototype of Pocopo. You can see Pocopo, which was split into four parts now, here. At this time, the circuit board was not directly attached to Pocopo. That's why all the wires were out of the device. The cable was much heavier than the body of Pocopo. Then by pressing all of the circuits, including motor drivers and multiplexers, in a position where they would not interfere with the user's hand, we successfully shortened the wire length. In this manner, Pocopo achieved its graspable size. Next, let me introduce the user study. We conducted two user studies to evaluate the effectiveness of Pocopo. In the first study, we tested whether the participants could perceive the different shapes rendered by Pocopo. In the second study, we investigated the acceptable range of the visual sizes of virtual objects for a given shape rendered by Pocopo and a given physical size. Since we have limited time for the presentation today, we only explain the user study for shape prediction here. For study 2, please read our paper. The purpose of the study 1 is to investigate whether the shapes rendered by Pocopo are distinguishable for the users by just holding the device without seeing it. We cover the board to prevent the participant from seeing Pocopo and the rendered shapes directly. To eliminate the effect of the way participants hold the device, it was mounted to a bespoke stand and we permitted the participants to touch the device stably during the study. A list of shapes was printed on a sheet of paper and posted on a vertical partition board in front of the participant. Following the previous studies, we prepared four primitive shapes, including rectangle, cylinder, sphere, and circle. Moreover, we would like to investigate whether the difference of the sensitivity between the fingertip and palm base influences the prediction of shapes. Therefore, we prepared asymmetrical shapes by rendering only the upper part or the lower part of the primitive shapes. This study comprised three sets. 
The first set is for familiarizing the participants with the device. The data measured in the first set were not used for the analysis. Each set involved 10 trials, through which the participants predicted the shape rendered by Pocopo. In addition, the answers, correspondence between the rendered haptic sensation and the intended shape were not revealed after each set. There were no duplication of shapes and no time limitations for each trial. The order of the presented shape was randomized and counterbalanced across the participants in each set. The results of the shape prediction with 10 participants were summarized in a confusion matrix. The numbers in the matrix represent the total number of predicted objects in the final two sets of the study, when each true object was rendered. The maximum number is 20, and the minimum number is 0. Overall, the participants were generally successful in predicting the shapes rendered by Pocopo, with an average success rate of 88.5%. Three shapes, namely the rectangle, circle, and semicircle above, had a prediction rate of 100%. The shape with the lowest prediction rate was the sphere. The participants sometimes tended to be confused the sphere with the circle in the current implementation. Because the number of rows was only three, the participants seemed to have difficulty understanding the height differences between the shapes. This result indicates that increasing the number of rows would improve the prediction of the shapes. The prediction rate of the three upper shapes was 93.3% on average, and that of three lower shapes was 83.3% on average. The participants tended to be confused the semisphere lower with the semicircle lower and vice versa. We assume that this result is due to the low sensitivity of the palm compared with the fingers. The comments from the participants support this result. If the users cannot notice the differences of shape with the palm base, it might not need to increase the number of pins for the palm base. Next, we present Pocopo's possible VR applications to present shapes and movements. Pocopo can render static objects by controlling each pin length. These figures show how the user can hold several shapes in VR. Pocopo can represent a glass with a linear surface, a matryoshka with a convex surface, or a trophy with a concave surface in VR. By dynamically moving each pin length in the user's hand, Pocopo can make users feel as if they are holding a moving object. In this example, the user feels the pulse of the hamster, which is represented by the expansion and contraction of the pins of Pocopo. In this case, the user can feel like a snake is wiggling in her hand. Of course, there are several limitations and future work to be addressed. Compared with those of other pin-based shape displays, Pocopo's pin speed is slower, the number of pins is smaller, and the display area is limited. A possible solution for these limitations is to utilize a visual haptic illusion. Although such research has been conducted with a grounded pin-based shape display, we believe that some of these techniques can be used in handheld pin-based shape displays as well. Finally, Pocopo lacks touch detection capability. Some of the ex existing pin-based shape displays enables each pin to detect the user's touch independently by using capacitive touch sensors. By adding touch sensing capability of Pocopo, we believe that we can expand its design space significantly. Okay. Let's move to the conclusions. The main contributions of Pocopo are threefold. First, we propose the concept of a handheld pin-based shape display for providing skin contact sensation on the user's hand in VR. Moreover, we present the design and implementation of Pocopo that miniaturize the size of the pin-based shape display into a handheld size. Finally, two user studies were performed to understand the capability of Pocopo through investigations of the prediction of the shape rendered by Pocopo and the visual size acceptance range. If you have any questions and comments, feel free to email me. That's all for my presentation.
Thanks.